Hi, welcome to Intellectual Minds Hub. In this video, we will talk about IMF. IMF stands for International Monetary Fund. It is an international financial organization created in 1944 with the goal of promoting global monetary cooperation, securing financial stability, promoting high employment and reducing poverty around the world. It serves as a forum for member countries to discuss and coordinate on global economic issues. It provides a range of services to its member countries including economic policy advice, financial assistance and technical assistance. The IMF primary tool for providing financial assistance is to loans to member countries facing balance of payment difficulties. These loans often come with conditions known as conditionalities which require the borrowing countries to implement certain economic reforms and policies in order to address the underlying problem causing the crisis. So basically the creation of IMF arose from the imperative to tackle worldwide economic crises and issues. Kristalina Georgieva is the managing director of IMF. The IMF is a major financial agency of the UN and international financial institution headquartered in Washington, consisting of 190 countries. The IMF has a rich history that dates back to the aftermath of World War II. The IMF was established at the Bretton Woods Conference held in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire in July 1944. Delegates from 44 countries gathered to design a system of international economic cooperation to prevent future economic crises and promote post-war reconstruction. The IMF's founding principles were outlined in its Articles of Agreement which were signed by member countries in December 1945. In its early years, the IMF focused on maintaining fixed exchange rates under the Bretton Woods system. Member countries agreed to peg their currencies to the US dollars which was linked to gold. The breakdown of the Bretton Woods system in 1971 when the US suspended the convertibility of dollars into gold led to a shift toward floating exchange rates. The 1980s era marked as a period of debt crisis in developing countries. In that situation, the IMF played a significant role in providing financial assistance to these countries through the implementation of structural adjustment programs known as SAPs. Over the years, the IMF membership grew as more countries joined. The collapse of Soviet Union in the early 1990s led to the joining of more members. The IMF played a central role in responding to various financial crises including the Mexican peso crisis, the Asian financial crisis the, and the global financial crisis. In recent years, there have been ongoing discussions about reforming the governance structure of the IMF to better reflect the changing global uh, economic landscapes. The IMF has several key functions and responsibilities like economic surveillance, financial assistance, technical assistance. The IMF provides financial assistance and technical support to low-income countries to address their unique development challenges. The IMF collaborates with the other international organizations also for this purpose. The IMF conducts regular surveillance of its member countries' economies and monitoring their economic and financial developments, policies, and potential risks. So that's why the IMF is important because it maintains the stability of the region, it causes the cooperation between the region and uh, helps a country to tackle with their crisis. While looking at the members of IMF, it includes the European region countries, Asian region countries and many more. And if you want to learn about that, and you can check the website of IMF too. Here is an overview of IMF organization. First of all, Board of Governors, the highest decision-making body of the IMF is the Board of Governors. It comprises one governor from each member country. The Board of Governors meets annually to discuss and decide on major policy issues that can be in IMF's general policies, financial resources, and governance matters. 
IMFC that stands for International Monetary and Financial Committee is a committee of board of governors and represents the IMF primary advisory body executive board that includes 24 members 5 appointed and 19 elected is responsible for the day to day operations and decision making of the IMF and the managing director is the head of IMF and is appointed by the executive board the managing director oversees the imf's day to day operations represents the institution at various international forums and plays a significant role in shaping the imf's policies and initiatives then staff the imf has several functional departments and staff members and each responsible each responsible for specific areas of the institution's work The IMF has various resources at its disposal to fulfill its mandate and support its members country. First of all, the quota system. Quotas are the most important source of financial resources for the IMF. Each member country contributes a financial quota based on its relative size in the global economy. Quotas are reviewed periodically to ensure they reflect changes in the world economy. then borrowing arrangements in addition to its quota resources the imf can borrow from member countries and international financial markets if necessary these borrowing arrangements provide fun- additional funds that the imf can use to provide financial assistance to the countries that are facing some problem gold holdings the imf holds gold as part of its reserves While gold is not a significant contributor to the IMF's financial resources, its value can be used to boost the institution's capacity to provide financial assistance. Then comes special drawing rights. Special drawing rights are a form of international reserve assets created by the IMF. They are allocated to the member countries in proportion to their IMF quota. the money that imf lent to the countries that is facing some problem basically comes from the three different sources first one is quota system as i have already explained the imf uses its quota based resources to finance lending second one is multilateral borrowing arrangements if the country if the borrowing country is facing some serious issue a crisis then the imf believes that the its quota resources might fall short so the imf borrow money from the other members to help that country that is facing some issue in the third line of defense is bilateral borrowing agreements that refers to financial arrangements made between the imf and individual member countries basically it takes place between the two members one is imf and the other is one member country furthermore pakistan has several engagements with the imf through various financial assistance programs from 1958 to 2021 pakistan got the membership of imf in 1950 first program was uh, started in 1958 pakistan entered into into its first imf program in 1958 shortly after becoming a member of the imf in 1988 pakistan sought an imf loan under a structural adjustment program to address fiscal imbalances and implement economic reforms like this pakistan also got the extended fund facility arrangement with the imf in 2001 in 2008 pakistan also signed an agreement and likewise Pakistan uh, till now Pakistan also getting loans from the IMF In return for financial assistance the IMF usually recommends various economic reforms to promote sustainable economic growth enhance revenue collection uh, reduce corruption and improve the overall business environment While looking at the public opinion IMF programs and associated austerity measures have been a subject of debate and criticism in pakistan some argue that these measures can lead to short term hardships for ordinary citizens while others condemn 
that they are necessary for long term economic stability and growth. As we have seen, the IMF's effort extends beyond financial assistance to encompass promoting inclusive and sustainable growth, poverty reduction, and economic reforms. The IMF's continued collaboration with member countries and other international organizations to tackle economic crisis. Remember, the IMF works impacts us all as it strives to create a more stable, prosperous, and equitable global economy. If you found this video informative, consider subscribing to our channel for more insightful content about global economics and international relations. Thank you for watching and keep striving. Success will be yours.